seamlessly teaming together pop melodies, hard on sleeve lyrics, and pop punk sensibilities, the Veronicas became breakout stars in 2005 with their debut album, The Secret Life Of. The twin sisters' effortless harmonies and penchant for detailing the scars of love made songs like Untouched, Take Me On The Floor, and Hook Me Up instant classics, paving the way to ARIA and MTV awards and multiple platinum certifications. This year, after a six-year wait between records, the Veronicas released two albums within four weeks of one another. Godzilla, the duo's brazen alter-ego-bearing fourth album, preceded Human, which marked a further departure into raw, vulnerable territory. I'm Poppy Reed, managing editor at Rolling Stone Australia, and for the Rolling Stone interview, I spoke with Jess and Lisa about the two records, how they protect the secret ingredient that started it all, the first song they ever wrote, and much more. Hey, we're the Veronicas, and you're watching Rolling Stone Australia. So I feel like we're talking in one of the most exciting times in the career of the Veronicas. Like, I just feel like this is such a special time. So Godzilla in May, another album in June, the, the first studio albums that you've released since 2014. Two, I think the first time you've ever released two records that close together. Yeah. Yes. That's huge. <laughs> How does it feel with all of this music coming out finally in a way? Oh my God. It's kind of crazy. We were just saying, you know, it's, it's wild because it has been so long since we've got to really envision what the album would feel like and sound like. And then when it came time to put it together, we had so much music and, and we were like, well, that's the beautiful thing about there's no rules here. We can make two albums and thematically, you know, Godzilla versus human, they, they were the two things that really stood out to us is our, our relationship with our vulnerability and, and who we are as, as Lisa and Jess, songwriters, storytellers, and then the Veronica's and all that the Veronica's embodies. Uh, so that's yeah, these two albums. It's been a long time. And how long has it been in the making? Like. We all know it's been a while. Yeah, how, how long? Yeah, a couple years. A couple years. Yeah, I mean, some of the songs have been longer than that, but we've finished them within the last couple of years. So Sugar Daddy, which just mm -hmm. we were just talking about, um, I think we wrote that about five years ago, but we just flipped around some of the production and, and you know, that was a fan favourite that got leaked online forever ago. So we were like, they've been asking us for it for five years. We were like, let's give them the, like, proper produced version yeah how does it feel when a song gets leaked is it it's not you're not the architect of of that narrative but it shows this huge buzz around it I guess <laughs> you must feel a bit torn yeah you know we we always old wanted... music being leaked is actually okay newer music being leaked is kind of a bummer yeah. yeah 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 and I feel like to me whether this is the right or wrong thing to technically say I think as long as the music gets to the fans, mm. I'm happy. Yeah. But that being but, said, when it's leaked, it's not yeah. on an official platform. It's hard for the them quality's to compromised. You know, maybe so it's a true. mix that's not finished. So as long as yeah, it, it needs to feel completed. Um, definitely. Yeah, so they can access it. Yeah, easy and access. Then, you know, your partners who you work on that record with is essentially being shunned out of That's any exactly kind of royalties, right. all that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think the yeah. fans necessarily know that because they're always just like, why can't you just release stuff? And it's like, because people have to be paid. Yep. Um, people are owed, you know, for their time, for their for their art, just as much as, you know, Absolutely. anybody. So, yeah. 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 Well, I was very, I had the privilege of being able to listen to Godzilla before the fans got it. That was freaking incredible. Oh, and cool. <laughs> there's many songs on it, which I just keep going back to. Silent is one of them. It's the, it has the most powerful opening line for me. And I'll read it out. You say you love me and you lie because your heart is ugly and I'm tired. Who wrote that line? <laughs> hey, <laughs> that is, it's huge. Tell Thank me about you. it. Thank you. Thank um, you. I was going through a breakup and reflecting on that time in my life and I just you know, when you go through something that essentially you, you can understand it was a toxic experience, it, you just feel exhausted by that point. And looking back at someone's heart and yeah, it was just very honest, to be completely honest, it, it wasn't even me just trying to write lyrics. And a lot of the record is like this, to, you know, on human as well is um, not trying to write lyrics, just writing feelings down. And that was just a, the thought at the time was, your heart is ugly and I'm tired. Yeah. 
Like you lied to me. Of course you think in poetry. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's just a very real, yeah. It's just like the thoughts that happen through your head when you're trying to have conversations with yourself. Um, And that is one of the, probably one of the rawest songs on Godzilla. Mm -hmm. I think lyrically so honest and it's, it's, I mean, it's literally, it feels like it's just, yeah, straight from here to here. Uh, Yeah. And that one I like, you made me silent, but I'm too loud because Mm -hmm that felt like I was silent, you know, or I felt like I had been silenced, like I couldn't speak my truth. And then, and then all of a sudden you realize you, you can, you can speak up. And it's like, no, I've always been a loud person. I've always been able to use my voice. I'm a literal singer as a Mm. career. And, you know, I'm too loud. I'm too loud to, to have this, you know, put on me anymore. Mm. Yeah, you've always used your platform for really things that you're really passionate about and done so in a really beautiful way. It's been one of my favourite things to watch over your career for sure. Thank you. Yeah. That means a lot. The other song that I love, The Only High, is oh, I just feel like it shows your range, like your vocal range, but also there's this refrain in it where you're really pulling back and it shows this vulnerability around it as well. Yeah, it's. I need to know the backstory of that one. <laughs> Well, that one, yeah, again, that one in reflection of, sorry, I'm actually running through the lyrics in my mind as you said that. I haven't listened to that one for a minute. I mean, we just approved the mixes not that long ago, but. um, We were taking a moment. Oh, I loved. That one is, that one is one of those ones you can really sing. And that's probably for me, like when Jess and I get to do that in a song, it's like the most soul fulfilling part of being a singer. And that song, you know. Well, that story is like, you're looking back at how you were in a relationship when you were younger and how you can be so reckless with other people's with hearts. other people's hearts, yeah. with your own heart, just reckless in life. And that's the beauty of being young. But as you fall in love, when you get older, and you realize like you don't need to look for the things outside of your love to get high or to create the excitement. The excitement is actually in the security and the, the highs Amen. in your, your love. Like, you know, not to sound kind of, I don't know, a bit like straighty 180 about it, but it's just, it's finding new appreciation for that security and where that actually gives you a completely different high and experience. and. You know, I think that we were moving into that space when we wrote that. You were getting engaged to her husband. And, you know, I was very much, um, you know, reflecting on that same energy. And so we wrote that song. That's so beautiful. Yeah. As a, as a married woman, I'm like, yeah, okay, this is my new anthem now. I love <laughs> that. Yeah, it's about like well, there is feeling some... safe. Yeah. And I think that loyalty and love and commitment is, it's such a beautiful thing that should be, celebrated more in music and and that sort of that yeah true commitment and and sometimes it's fun to sing about the reckless stuff or the the it's therapeutic to get all the other stuff out but also uh so um beautiful to be able to sing about when you find that special connection yeah yeah, it's yeah. A special. do you remember the first song you both ever wrote together God, it must have been yeah. when you were babies yeah, <laughs> yeah. i think it was um cry could have been, or it's happening again. Oh, it's happening again. It's We're happening thinking. again. Yeah. Uh, what were the lyrics? Um, I think of I what think you of said what to me. You said to me. No, I can't go back to how it used to be. Yeah. I try to run and hide, put my emotions aside. Because I can't face, face the fact the one good thing I found I can't, I can't have. I can't have. <laughs> yeah, it was 13. <laughs> That's actually really good. I thought it was going to be about, you know, cereal or. <laughs> Capricorn, yeah. so we were like, yeah. you know, intense from the womb, poor mom. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we, we, it was like three <laughs> chords on the acoustic. from the beginning, I guess. Oh. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> and I want to talk about your TV spots for a moment. So you're on The Apprentice now at the moment, but you're kind of reality TV show pros, having done Blood is for Life, of course. No, for sure. Um, what have you learned from filming your life like that in that way? <laughs> It always seems like a good idea at the time, <laughs> but in retrospect, uh, you know, I think if there's ever a lesson that you learn in, in that regard, it's, 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 it's really just to let things go um, and, and to just celebrate and have fun in the moment. I mean, we look back at anything that is a moment in time like that and 
just think, wow, that was really dumb or that was hilarious and we enjoy it for the moment and then we let yes. it go because, you know, yes. otherwise we can overthink stuff and appreciate you know. the moment. I think be as present as possible, <laughs> live passionately, live loudly and, you know, have no regrets. Even when you're looking back thinking, oh my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's passion speaks louder sometimes. So, yeah. yeah. Can I tell you about one of my favourite moments on Blood is for Life, the MTV show? <laughs> so there's this moment where you get the coffee machine delivered and you're not there to show for him to show you how to set it up. Oh. And I think it's you ask Logan to stall him. Yes. yes. <laughs> he, goes, <laughs> he goes into a full spiel of all these facts. The history. And, yeah. <laughs> That's every day with Logan though, can I say? It's like it's a history lesson every single day. I When I met him the first day, I was like, Oh my God, this guy's like blowing my mind. Should I be Google fact checking him? <laughs> there's, there's so an influx of information is just coming at me. And then I, I was like, hmm, he's an actor. Could this just be a big kind of charade? And then second date, third date, eight years later, this guy's a genius. Yeah. He He's an absolute magician. He's a passionate person. He loves to educate he people. He does. He loves it's to share. It's incredible. And so oh, he that was scene. very good at stalling the coffee guy. Yeah. No, but he's like, no props. You got yeah, this. Yeah. I'm not this born for this. <laughs> he's so great like that. You could, when, we, we, when we were traveling the States doing shows, we'd be like, okay, look, you go out on stage and introduce us. And he would go out and put on a whole big yeah. fanfare for us he's the coolest guy he's like the guy you want that is ready for anything yes. that's why he's the coolest like person to have in your life like everybody needs a logan because logan is down to ride epic teammate for whatever <laughs> idea you need or like you know he's epic, fearless epic motivator and, yeah. yeah the other cool thing that came out of that tv series was just how many nicknames you two have for each other <gasps> oh yeah can you list them off like if, the ones that you have chi chi, chi, -chi. which we the confusing thing about Chi Chi is we're both named Chi Chi. So yeah. it's, they're like, well, which one's Chi Chi? We're like, well, we're both Chi Chi technically. So that's confusing for everybody. Um, <laughs> we just have our own little language, I guess, that we, we honestly never realized until you're being filmed 24 seven for a, a few months. And then you watch it back and you go, we're a bit weird. Like twins are weird. <laughs> Fascinating. Fascinating. We didn't know we were like that. We don't over, you know, we don't know. Yeah, and whatever we'd watch to get back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, there was so yeah, there was like Chi Chi. You know, you say my love all the time. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> my love can sometimes be a little condescending. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my love. <laughs> I do that a little bit in Celeb Apprentice. I realized watching Sorry, the my promos. Love. Um, yeah. Can you not speak over me, my love? Thanks. <laughs> I thought that was no. really good. So you know. <laughs> Like, yeah, well, I wasn't finished. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I finished my sentence. Men, yeah. like men We're triggered by a little bit. And it's like, excuse me, I'm, I'm finishing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Like, Not enough women have stood up, and that's why it keeps happening. Exactly. And you're standing up, so it's good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so you're touring, and I guess you chose a really good time to tour, actually. COVID restrictions are easing a little bit. Yeah. 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 How are you feeling about the show? So excited. Like, yeah. live performances by far you know, the heart of the Veronica's. Um, we always tend to make our live shows a little bit more rock and roll than the albums. It's like our chance to, like we love live music. So it's just our chance to be ultra creative on stage, connect with, connect with our fans and, you know, get high off their energy and, and tell stories and just kind of run around and scream. And I don't know, I, I, for Lisey, I know that she really loves the songwriting being in the studio and like she feels like without that process she would die. And for me, it's if I couldn't be putting all my energy in an extroverted space like mm -hmm. on stage, um, yeah, I would feel really lost. So yeah, I'm, yeah, we're, we're so excited. To oh, you like must have it. struggled in COVID then. Yeah, Not being a able little to perform bit. live as much, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I did. I did, but I didn't. I did, but I didn't. I've been learning techniques to channel. Oh yeah, what do you got? Um, breathing is incredibly helpful. Um, I put all of my focus and energy into learning about mushrooms and mycology, which is the study of fungi. Um, yeah, I just have to keep my mind 
occupied pretty much 24 7. So different documentaries, I started a lot of different um, just yeah, I learned how to make necklaces. I was, you know, we started a, a company called Planted, which is our health wellness holistic company that we've started. Um, finished two albums. It was really just like having to channel that physical energy somewhere. We started Pilates every day. It was yoga, like just anything that we could do. So. Yeah. And your study of mushrooms, did that involve its use in psychedelics? Uh, it does go into the use of psychedelics. Yes. My pet, yeah. Uh, every time I talk about mushrooms now, people are always like, "Damn, you love the magic mushrooms!" And I'm like, "I'm like, there are many I, uses. That's so amazing. Like, there's so much incredible research being done on psilocybin mm-hmm. and the healing um, effects it has on the brain, and they're they're doing incredible research with that now, especially in in America. Um, but for me, it was more about the medicinal aspects of um, tonic herbs and and the you know, um, the mushrooms that aren't the psil- yeah. psilocybin. Yeah. But that being said, um, my, my friend messaged me the other day, Courtney Act, I don't know if you know yes, Courtney Act. Yes, yeah, of course you do. She's iconic. She messaged me the other day being like, hi, sweetie, like I've been watching you posting about mushrooms nonstop thinking, wow, she's just loving the psychedelics. And then I realized, <laughs> she's like, and then I realized you're just talking about regular old plain boring mushrooms. <laughs> and I was like, honey, all mushrooms are magic. She's like, no, honey, they're not. I'm like, no, they are. Let me tell you about it. I'm just obsessed with fungi. Yeah, it's not, it's not about getting high. It's yeah, although yeah. there's again there's a lot of healing that comes with that particular compound. It's amazing, um, but yeah, it's it's more about just my obsession with um, the study of of fungi. <laughs> I'm so uh, glad I got this opportunity Lisa. to talk. Lisa's like, anyway, moving on. No, no, I love it. Oh no, I love it. I I've actually. Um, I've just moved to uh, some acreage. I finally got my little paradise. And I was saying, I can't wait to have Jesse there because all these mushrooms are popping yeah. up everywhere. I need her to come and identify them all. Yeah, which ones can I eat? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Which ones do I need to steer yeah. clear of? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, don't yeah. want to make that mistake. Yeah. 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 No, it's the last mistake you'll make if you make Yeah, that's mistake. it. <laughs> Final mistake. <laughs> yeah. And then I guess finally, um, I mean, you've been – Recording music, a band, a business for over 17 years now, but you're also twins, your family. Is it hard to protect that thing, that thing that makes you so special, that thing that ha- you had at the start um, that you still have now, that, that secret ingredient, I guess? Yeah. That secret ingredient is just authenticity. It's just being authentic to where you're at and we all evolve and change. And I always say like music is transient. Um, people are, you know, completely transcending at all times when never the same, even from one moment to the next. And I think that we always say the, the, um, the secret to living is growing. And that's why we started Planted. And, you know, for us, we have always encapsulated that into our music and into the Veronica's. We never want to do anything that we've either done before or been known for. We always want to take risks because that's where we found our greatest success and our greatest sort of pleasure in what we do. And um, yeah, we always we always want to be loving that. That's a really interesting. Like, it's the only way to, to for growth, right? So growth must be a huge purpose of yours. Um, but that must be hard when you've been doing this for so long you're like we're going to do something we haven't done yeah which is sometimes stripping it all back like it's not always I think people always think like oh we've got to take risks and they think risks is being louder or crazier or something and it's like no sometimes it's literally bringing it back and being more vulnerable sometimes it's um doing the thing that people would think is mainstream it's it's sort of it sort of depends on your brand and it also just depends on where you're at personally and as an artist and we love just being able to connect with what that is at any time. But that's why the Veronica's sort of, we always say our genre is just authenticity. Mm-hmm. There's no one type of genre that we create because we mm-hmm. want to be able to do everything. And I feel like you've done that with this music, this new music as well. You can't compare it to anything you've done before. Thank you, you know, the, the release as a whole, it doesn't compare. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sweetheart. We appreciate it. Thank you.